All right. Thank the Lord. Good morning, Facebook. Welcome to our Sunday school. Now turn it over to Commissioner yes. Pat Melton. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. And good morning to you. This is the praise day the that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for another Sunday morning and another Sunday school to learn more of God's word. So at this time, we are going to, um, well, I want to say uh, good morning to Facebook and to everyone on the Zoom uh, this morning. And I would like to ask if there are any prayer requests, um, let it be made known at this time. Yes. Um, pray for the uh, Beckwith family and the um, Isaac family, more specifically Andrea Isaac. Um, you'll be having a homegoing service on Tuesday for her mother, uh, Tanya Beckwith. I continue to pray for um, me and my household, continue to pray for my children, uh, pray for uh, our church, pray for one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Yeah, continue to pray, <clears throat> continue to pray for the situation in Ukraine. Uh, also, Pray for the bereaved families, uh, one family in particular, uh, the Comfort the Luther family. Comfort for the Luther family. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Uh, yes. Can you keep uh, Tom Duquay Hill in prayer? Art Wade Bailey, uh, Terry Dinkins, and his mother Celeste Dinkins, the Dotson family. Uh, keep the unsaved portion of my family in prayer, Kadia, our youth in the body of Christ. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Can you um, keep me and my family in prayer? My brother that's uh, in the hospital in North Carolina, keep him in prayer. Let's continue praying one for another. Continue praying for Pastor First Lady sick and afflicted, homeless, and bereaved families. Amen. Any other prayer requests? If not, we're going to go ahead and go to the throne of grace. Amen. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we come to you, Lord God, to give you the glory, honor, and the praise, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for another day, Lord God. Oh, God, we just ask, Lord God, that you be with us throughout this day, Father God. And, Lord God, we want to ask for any forgiveness, Lord God, of anything that we've done that's not of you, Lord God, that you would cleanse us once again, Father God. Forgive us, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for the prayer requests that have come forth, Lord God, praying one for another, Lord God. So we ask, Lord God, that you would Oh, God, touch the Beckwith family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus and the Isaac family, Lord God. Andrea, Lord God, wrap your loving arms all around her, Lord God, as she laid to rest her mother on this Tuesday, Lord God. And bless Alfonso Isaac, Lord God, and all the family and friends associated with the Beckwith family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to touch all bereaved families in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way like never before, Father God. The Luther family, Lord God. Oh God, bless them and comfort them as well, Father God. In the name of Jesus, bless those throughout the land, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, born through the bereavement, Lord God. Oh God, we just ask, Lord God, that you continue, Lord God, to bless, Lord God, our pastor and first lady, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, continue to keep them, Lord God, and Oh, God, lead God and direct them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and bless their household, Father God, bless their children, Lord God, their grandchildren, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, we ask, Lord God, that you would, oh, God, touch those, Lord God, that's in the Ukraine, Father God, just, oh, God, to, to change the situation around, Father God. We know you are in control of it, Father God, and God, we put all our trust in you, Father God, that you're having your way in the name of Jesus. 
Oh God, we ask, Lord God, that you touch the uh, Cahill uh, family, Lord God, Tanya Cahill and Artway Bailey and the Dinkin and Dotson family, Lord God, the unsaved portion of all of our families, Lord God, Katie and nursing home, Lord God, all the nursing homes, Father God. Oh God, go into their nursing homes and the hospitals throughout the land, Father God, touch, heal, deliver, and set free. Oh God, we ask you touch the youth, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they will come to know you, Father God. Oh God, protect them along the way, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, touch the body of Christ, Jesus, have your way. Oh God, we ask you touch Mother Melton, bless her and keep her like never before, Father. Oh God, we ask, Lord God, that you would touch her brother, Lord God. In the name of Jesus that just had surgery, Lord God, we ask that you heal his body, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, let him continue to trust in you, Lord God. Oh God, we ask you to touch the sick and shut in all over the land, Father God. Touch the homeless, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask that you have your way on this morning on Sunday school, Father God. Oh God, that we'll be not just hearers, but doers of your word, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, and we praise you, Lord God. Oh, God, we ask you bless those that's here, Lord God, and those that want to be here but could not for whatever reason, Father God. We just thank you and praise you. And we glorify you. It is in the mighty, magnificent name of Jesus. We say amen, amen, and amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank God for this uh, Sunday school lesson that's uh, titled True Wisdom. Um, and it's going to come from 1 Corinthians 1. Uh, 17 through 31. But before we get into the lesson, uh, we ask that Deacon Nate will come forth with the Apostle Creed at this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born unto Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. And on the third day, he arose from the dead. There he ascended into heaven and there he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from which it should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of body and life everlasting. Amen. 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 Thank you for the uh, Apostle Creed. Uh, amen. So we're going to Get into this lesson here called again true wisdom if you don't have a sunday school book you can just grab your bible and go to first corinthians 1 uh, 1 uh 17 to, through 31 amen and join right in with this whether you're in the zoom room or on facebook all right um our uh, related scriptures here are first corinthians 2 1 through 16, Jeremiah 9, 23 through 24, and Romans 1, 18 through 32, and 11, 33 through 36. The time is AD 55 and the place from Ephesus. The golden text. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 1 Corinthians 1, 27. Amen. And I'm going to read here the introduction. And it reads, the vision is a great enemy of any church, whether at the individual level, the local level, or the denominational level. If we are to avoid division and strive for unity, then there must be a uniting element that draws all Christians together. The question is, what is that one thing that unites us? What is it that allows a Christian who is visiting a congregation for the first time to walk in and commune with a group of people he does not even know? According to Paul, the unifying element is 
the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross is where we all met Jesus at the moment of faith and repentance. The cross is where Christ satisfied the debt of sin we owe by God, I'm sorry, of sin we owe God by paying our just penalty. The cross is where Jesus took our sins on his body and purchased our redemption. First Peter 2, 24. No matter which church you belong to or which denomination you are in, the cross is where your spiritual life begins. And amen. Amen. I'm sorry. Amen. Okay. All right. And our lesson outline, excuse me for that interruption there. Um, our lesson outline this morning, we have three. The first one is power from God. First Corinthians 1, 17 through 25. The second one, calling from God. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29, and last, boasting in God, 1 Corinthians 1, 30 through 31, amen. So, oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to read the uh, today's aim, and it reads, facts, to note the sharp contrast between God's wisdom and the purported sophistication of the world. Principle to understand that God's wisdom in the gospel, I'm sorry, let me read that again. <laughs> Principle to understand that God's wisdom in the gospel is foolishness in the eyes of the world but that worldly wisdom is powerless to save anyone. And the application to devote ourselves to the godly wisdom of the saving gospel rather than become obsessed with gaining mere worldly sophistication, which leads to pride and can save no one. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have how many readers we have here this morning? We have enough. Two, three, four, five. Sure, are you available to read? Yes. All right, Pastor, are you available to read? If not, I'm sure we can cover. Fifteen. Okay, so we have fifteen scriptures here. I guess Pastor is not available. So if I'm sorry. Okay, so if everybody takes three three scriptures, I'll take the last one. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we will start with. Um, Mother Melton and uh, Sister Alicia, uh, Deacon Nate, and Elder Melton, and I'll go with the last one. First Corinthians one seventeen, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. <laughs>
Sister Alicia. Sister Alicia. Sorry. 20. Okay, you take. Mm -hmm. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the by the foolishness of by fo foolish foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Okay. For the, uh, for the Jews required a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greek foolishness. But unto them are called both Jews and Greeks. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Are called both Jews and Greeks. Oh. Because of foolishness of God is wiser than men, the weakness of God is stronger than men. For, for you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God have chosen the foolish foolishness, foolish things of the, of the world to confound the wise, and God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are de despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. So thank you all for um, the reading of our scripture lesson text on this morning. And we are going to go ahead and... Um, jump into this lesson, get started with that. Uh, hopefully we'll get through the whole thing. Um, let's start with our first lesson outline, which is power from God. First Corinthians 1, uh, I'm sorry, First Corinthians 1, 17 through 25. And it's uh, power from God. Um, the cross in baptism, if I can get a reader. Last week's lesson ended with what we may seem like an unusual statement. Paul wrote that he was glad that he had not baptized many of the Christians. He goes on to explain his reasoning that baptism was not the focus of his ministry, but rather the preaching the gospel. Paul's point is not that baptism is unimportant, but that the message of the gospel takes precedence over it. There is no saving power in baptism, but people do come to faith through the gospel. An unbeliever who gets baptized is still un unsaved. Baptism is an act that follows salvation, not one that produces salvation. The emphasis on Paul's ministry was to bring the gospel to the lost and bring them to faith and repentance. The power of the gospel rests in Jesus' completed redeeming work the cross of Christ. Paul did not want the Corinthians to, to uh, Corinthians focus to be on his speaking ability, but on God's glory in the cross. Amen. Uh, what this is uh, mainly saying is uh, Paul didn't want people to focus on baptism, and this is what they were uh, 
having a problem with, like you said, with last week's lesson. They was right. talking that um, one baptized this different, you know, well, I don't want to go back to the lesson, but different ones baptized. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul was letting them know that, you know, he, him preaching the gospel was more important than uh, who baptized them or the baptism. What it's saying is the power of God is in the in the uh, in it's 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 through faith in Jesus Christ, faith in the word that he was preaching, and not the power was not in baptism. Right. Said the power of the gospel rests in Jesus completed redeeming work the cross of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So he was Paul, you know, he was saying this, like I said, he wasn't, you know, speaking against baptism. Um, but like I said, not to put the focus there it was more about, you know, him coming to uh, spread the gospel, teach the gospel, speak the word. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to read the scripture and I don't have it up. Uh, but um, anyway, um, using, you know, wisdom uh, here for them to get an understanding because the Corinthian church, the Corinthian church had a lot of problems as we know, and this was one of them. So um, does anybody else have anything that they want to um, share on that, expound on this uh, part of the lesson? Please feel free. If not. Uh, I was not go ahead, go ahead the I was waiting mm -hmm. on you. I just wanted to say how important it was that the writer put into the lesson today that about the baptism that is unimportant, but the message of the gospel takes precedence over it. That a lot of times when people are baptized, they think that, you know, they're saved and that's it, you know? And um, sometimes the churches, not all churches, but some churches fall short because after baptism, you know, they get them active and everything, but there has to be a teaching point to the believers, the new new believers that, um, you know, they still, they still don't learn, you know, and it's important that once the new believers are baptized that there's still teaching going on one-on-one, -on -one, you know, so, I, you know, I kind of like that when it says that an unbeliever gets baptized and is still unsafe, that it's important that you still have those teachings to those new believers. You get them to the point where they get to the water, but after that, that's it. And it's important, you know, um, that, you know, that's being used in wisdom, how you help them to continue to understand the word of God is good. Everyone can't grasp the word of God when they're just new coming into Christ, that more teaching mm -hmm. should be, um, you know, uh, more new beginner teachers should Taught, be taught to the new believers so that they can grasp the word of God because the Bible says that they are babes in Christ that desires the sincere milk of the gospel. So we can't just give them meat, you know, they still have to, mm -hmm. you know, drink milk, you know, so that they can get to the point where they're eating meat. So, you know, I kind of mm -hmm. like that part in the, um, the lesson today. Yeah, that's that's, uh, you know, one of the things I was looking at, because, you know, Romans chapter six all uses, you know, language to to kind of clarify things that, you know, to walk in a new life, you know, you first have to have salvation, then baptism. And, and some people, you know, as he was talking to Romans that, uh, you know, it, did they not know that when they were baptized, uh, that, that they were basically, they were laying the old man to rest. And, and so uh, brave and being raised uh, like Christ was raised from the grave, that we, they were being raised in a new life. So baptism is something that should be done, but you can't 
have baptism where you, you know there's no there's no sense of having baptism without salvation salvation is what's going to get you into heaven um there's been many of you know deathbed uh confessions you know and they didn't have time to get baptized mm -hmm. so but the message is a uh, message of salvation is what is, is important but uh, a believer that is able and capable of being baptized should be um so I like the way, you know, he focused on, on that part too. I remember reading this a while back in, in Paul, you know, because everybody have, uh, when it comes to leadership and pastors and churches, uh, I think sometimes we, we, we look at some ministries and criticize what some ministries are doing, but God has given everybody the same ministry, but a different ministry in a sense. Uh, you know, the, the ministry of the gospel is one thing, but how they uh, how they reach other people is, is a, maybe a little different than how we reach other people. Um, but uh, I also like the, the fact that we talked about because we see it a lot, you know, how uh, preachers preach a certain message. And because they use e e elaborate words and speak eloquently, we think they're so anointed. But Paul said, hey, it's not about all that. Um, it's not about using certain uh, words because sometimes you can lose people in your message and it, and it distracts from the gospel. Uh, I know <laughs> Pastor so and Missionary Pat, when we went to the funeral a few weeks ago, uh, the pastor, it was a good message, but it was it was so tied up with a lot of other stuff. You could lose people, mm -hmm. you know, and even at that, you know, at the end, really, you know, Christ wasn't offered. So what, what good is the message? Um, um, and that's what Paul was talking about here. You know, hey, it's about the me the gospel message. It's not about you know mm -hmm. you words and uh, uh, sounding you know sweet and eloquent so people be oh, awed. Sure. The message. It's not about the awe. It's about driving home the message of the cross. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. I can I throw in something here? Uh, mm -hmm. Because I know that when people join the church or get baptized, they don't have an understanding what that means, right? And you certainly, you, you have, we have uh, new members uh, information. You set up a time for them to come in. They don't show up. So I, th I think everything that we do starts with prayer, number one. Mm -hmm. All we can do is, is prepare and provide, but we are supposed to be discipling people. Well, it's funny that we're talking about this because over the pulpit this morning, I'm going to express more about people coming on the Wednesday night Zoom for Bible study. I can't teach Bible study at 11 o'clock. I just can't. I won't. Uh, that is for compelling. That is for encouragement. That is for a, a timely message for the ones who are in Christ sometimes and, and the ones who uh, are not in Christ and don't know Christ, you, you, have, you have a message for them. But people want to be um, part of something. And when I say part of something, I'm talking about the body of Christ, but they don't want to go through anything in, in regards to the sacrifice that they have to go through in order to learn more of Jesus Christ. We all know in our in our former churches, even right now, and it's funny, I'm about to say this word that I'll be preaching on this morning. The faithfulness of people have dwindled down to just about nothing. That's why I will not uh, 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 align with the world. Hey, we're not going to have hip hop music to bring them in. We're not going to do all. All I know is the word says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw men unto me. So we have a platform. We have uh, the material, right? The Bible itself to teach from, but the discipleship has to be accepted by those who are coming in. Like we just had some a few new members coming in. Hey, it, it has to be, I remember coming into the church. Uh, I wasn't asked, could I come to Bible study? I was told to come to Bible study. And you're absolutely right, uh, um, Elder Bostic, in terms of uh, people not doing anything until uh, they they line up with, <coughs> excuse me, with what is is called towards their discipleship before they join. I couldn't join a choir. I couldn't join any type of committee. Uh, mm -hmm. The focus was on salvation, my salvation. 
discipling me, knowing what was expected of me, not by just the pastor, but by the Lord Jesus Christ. So you, you're absolutely right. Uh, in these days and times, I, I think sometimes we, as um, ministries, as pastors, sometimes we we don't hold to what we've been taught by because we already know that the world doesn't like, the world wants to do it their way, but I'm telling you, we're getting back to the place where baptism, discipleship, uh, uh, Wednesday night, see this Zoom thing too, people give excuses, either they can't get their computer, they don't know how to use that stuff, I don't know how to use that kind of stuff, or if you have a live Bible study, as we all can attest to, they, they still won't show up, right? They just want to be Sunday to Sunday saints. If that's the case, then that's what will allow them to be, but you can't participate in anything else. They're going to be left out in a lot of things. I'm talking about the choir. Um, you know, I've allowed people to just come and, and jump on the choir whenever they want to. All that is coming to an end now. Because discipleship, um, as they say, is the, is the prominent and the primary thing. When they come in unto knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, now the teaching has to come in. And the teaching can't be by giving them steak. They do have to start with milk. Now, some will say, I've been in church. Oh, I've been in church. That's not my first church. But you, you never drank milk. That's why you choked on steak and ran out of the church. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm going off on a... Uh, tangent. So, but anyway, this this is good. Sunday school lessons good. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Thank you. That was good. All right. Um, if, uh, no one else has anything on that first uh, one here. I mean, topic. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. The cross despised. First Corinthians uh, one eighteen through nineteen. If I can get a reader. Uh, the interests of the world are diametrically opposed to the interests of God. Genuine love does not give a person his harmful desires. It provides for his deepest needs. Christ met the world's deepest need in the cross, but on their own, the lost do not understand their need for redemption. Because of this, the world rejects the message of the cross and consider it to be foolish. In the world's eyes, if a hero dies, he at least goes down fighting. It is honorable, if not glamorous, for the heroes to go out in a blaze of glory. But to the world, Christ was just a Jewish man, maybe a prophet who had no power or pride at all. <clears throat> He allowed himself to be accused without defending himself and crucified without uh, putting up a fight. If he did not have the power to defend himself, how could he have the power to raise from the dead, from the grave? Jesus is, is the epitome of meekness. Meekness, of course, does not necessarily impl Im imply weakness. The strongest people in the world can exhibit that quality. But it cannot be denied that Jesus allowed himself to appear weak in the eyes of his enemies, to let them have their way with him and did not do all he could have to counter the impress of his defenselessness. Why? Jesus could have destroyed his enemies and annihilated those who crucified him. He could have led a parade through the street of Jerusalem and gained a national following for himself. That would certainly have been impressive by the world's standards. But if he had gone that route, we would still be dead in our sins. We needed Jesus to die on the cross, bearing our sins for us, and taking our punishment and statement of death. Um, <clears throat> while the world considers the message of the cross to be foolish, Believers understand to be the power of God, the apparent weakness of the cross, the power of God for our salvation played out and was made manifest. But it is by the power of Jesus' cross that God destroyed worldly wisdom. So basically it's just saying how 
um, the cross is being was is being how it's being denied, and we can even see that you know nowadays. I think someone was saying how everybody has a different ministry to draw people to Christ. You know whether it's the bells and whistles, or whether you know it's you know um, hellfire, or you know some people are still preaching um, hellfire, but um, it's being despised because people, it, it's not being taken seriously. And just like I said, you know, somebody very important who dies, um, you know, sometimes they'll do a whole week wow. of, you know, rituals. Sometimes they, you know, it's televised, which is true, you know, but Christ, he could have done all of that. As, as, the, as the, the lesson is said, he could have did all of that for attention, but he didn't do it, you know? So we have to understand that how important the cross is to us and how important that he died for us. They give us an opportunity to come to Christ before, you know, uh, we die in our sins. So, you know, um, it is, you know, a lot of, and a lot of people have come from the church and gotten famous and, you know, they get praised up. But what about how Christ died for us on the cross? How do we praise him up? You know, how do we continue to praise him up and be thankful for him dying on the cross for us? Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes. A lot, a lot in here. Um, I said, um, we, you know, we're being saved, first of all. So um, we have to uh, understand God's uh, wisdom and not worldly wisdom um, in all of this. So, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get my little note to pop up here. While you're doing that, I just wanted to mention, you know, just driving home, the lesson said, part of it says, Jesus allowed himself mm -hmm. weak in the eyes of the enemy. Jesus was not weak. He allowed himself. He said that no man can take my life, but I lay down my life. So, you know, that's something that needs to be, to be uh, to state it because we know that, you know, people look at this and that's why it, it seemed foolish you know, the, the gospel has seen food to those, uh, to those Jewish people, <clears throat> I mean, to, and to the Greeks, because they, they just didn't understand that, you know, a person that, uh, you know, to, to take such, a, uh, such punishment and brutality against them and not do anything about it. And, and then to say that he had the power to do something, but he didn't, because most people are not going to stand there and take that type of punishment. They're going to defend themselves. But that's just the message of the gospel. They don't understand it. It goes on to say, uh, it says, we needed Jesus to die on the cross, bearing our sins for us and taking the punishment of our sin for death. What was the purpose? They couldn't, they didn't understand why he was doing it, but that's what we needed him to do. And he knew that we needed it too. <laughs> exactly. And that's why he yeah. did. See, they're looking at it. How can he take, how can he allow them to do this to him and not defend himself? But that, mm. was, that wasn't what the cross was about. They didn't understand. Exactly. And then it also said that, you know, where it says, while the world think that the cross was foolish, you know, we as believers have to understand that it's to be, uh, be the power of God, you know. So we have to understand it. We have to get an understanding that it was important for him to die for us. Yes, now that we're believers, we knew he could destroyed everything and we could have, you know, been short. We could not be saved, you know, for the believers. So it's important, you know, that once we become believers that we, um, you know, be able to tell the world that yes, Christ died for us. You know, if it hadn't been for him dying for us, we wouldn't be existing today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Power of God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was just thinking about how sometimes even I might be off a little bit here, but how people want, you know, always want a sign, show me a sign, you know, um, for them to believe. Uh, you know, all of these things like that, just 
foolishness. It's foolishness. I mean, um, because if you tell them, you know, no, not tell them. They see that you're going through, but you're not um, going crazy about it. And you say, I'm trusting God for this. And and they're like, trusting God? You, How are you going to do this? And how are you going to do that? I'm trusting God. But, you know, they don't believe. Lord, I am trying to get it out. They don't believe whether they see the sign or not. Are they truly going to still, are they going to believe then? God has shown many a signs. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes uh, people will say, how do you know there's a God? Well, mm -hmm. I tell them that because he changed me, he came into my life. So it's the power of God that I know that works, that worked in me to change me is how I know mm -hmm. there is a God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. People, people ask, uh, how do you know there's a God? I say, how do you know you have a brain? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever seen your brain? No. Come on. I just know it functions. Well, the same thing about God. God is functioning in my life. God has saved me from a, from a life that was going to take me to a fiery hell. You know, the world would try to confound us who know the word and that's why God takes his word and takes his believers to confound the world. The doctor gives you a report. You go back, he sees nothing. She sees nothing. And it confounds the, the, you know, their practice, what they believe, all the signs pointed towards this, but see, they don't understand the God we serve. They don't understand it because you must be. What did Jesus tell Nicodemus? Nicodemus was a smart man. He said, you must be born again. Must be born again. And that's why people don't understand because they don't believe because they have nothing in them to believe. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't, you know what? And I have compassion for them because I was once those I'm calling them. Mm. Mm. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I, yeah, and, and that's so true. Um, I, I know I was having a conversation uh, back a little while ago and a young lady was, was talking about the Lord and, and um, you know, you don't have to, we don't, we're, we're not here to convince anybody. Which Lord, though, she was talking about? You got to be careful. People do have I'm Lord. I'm sorry? I said, <laughs> yeah, well, which Lord? Well, let me say because this. People do have Lord. I was talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, okay? And um, I don't know who her Lord is, but I know who mine is. And we were having a discussion, but um, as they were leaving, they said, oh, I have a lot of questions, and I'll have you scratching your head. <laughs> See, that's the foolishness, you know? Um, but I don't have to convince you, you know, of who the Lord is, you know, um, my, my walk is enough because I, I'm not going to get into this heated discussions because God is not the author of confusion. That's what happens. Confusion comes in, you know, um, um, I'm here to, of course, God put us here to reach out to the, the lost, but I, I don't have to you know, do cockwheels and flips and, and say, let me break my arm and show you God a healing, you know, something crazy, you know, that's, that's not, that's not of God. But anyway, you know, people would get into those discussions and, and think that they know more than God knows. Anyway. Anybody else? If not, let's go to the next one. I'll read it. The cross. I'm sorry. I said I can read it. Oh, okay. The cross and the world's foolishness. First, Com First Corinthians 1, 20 through 21. Thank you. I'm reading it because it's short. After establishing, <laughs> <laughs> after establishing that the cross of Christ is the power of God for the Christian, Paul then turns his attention to the wise the scribes, and the great debaters in Corinth. Like a gunslinger in the Old West, he boldly calls them out to expose their weakness in the face 
of the power of God. <coughs> Paul uh, was a very learned man himself. So he knew because guess what? He had the same Jewish teachings that uh, these men of that time uh, had. And if we go back to the scriptures, it says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? God's thoughts are not like our thoughts. His ways are not like our ways. So when we begin to, uh, instead of uh, defend the uh, gospel by our lifestyle, see, people think defending the gospel is by knowing the word. Yeah, you, you, we should know the word. But defending the gospel is actually standing on the word of God and moving through the times of trouble, moving through when the enemy is attacking, uh, attacking us, resisting. That is a, uh, defending the gospel, that we stand on every word and precept of God's word. That's how we defend the gospel. When somebody cusses us out and we have to turn the other cheek and not cuss them out and then maybe speak a word that will calm it down. The, the Bible says grievous words stir up anger, but a soft answer <laughs> turn away wrath. That's defending the gospel. And as far as as far as the world's foolishness to God, it is. He made everything that's in the world. It says the earth is the Lord and the fullness that, uh, uh, thereof. They that dwell there, he, he owns, he's created everything. So he is an all wise God. He don't have to, he don't have to go back and forth with us. God already knows our thoughts before they come into our minds. So uh, mm -hmm. the, the cross, the cross and the world's foolishness. Don't debate the cross. The cross is God's uh, uh, showing us the revelation of himself is that he emptied himself into human flesh. He came to do something we couldn't do, and that is to live according to God the Father, that, that he took everything that we could ever go through or have done and put it up on that rugged cross. He, he bore all the sins who had no sin. He bore all the sins. So the foolishness of the world, not to understand that he just didn't come save, save folks because we wasn't saved until he saved us. He came to save the world. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Like Anybody else? I like the way the lesson said that, you know, how he calls him out like a, a, a gunslinger, you know, in the, in the old West. Yeah, that was good. To expose their weakness because mm -hmm. all these other messages of salvation through these other, uh, shall I say, uh, belief systems, that, 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 that the message is weak and, and we should expose it to how, you know, compared to the gospel message. And it says like here, Paul calls him out, you know, taking up old West, you know, uh, you know, they take 10 pages, uh, you know, they're going to, they're going to have a shootout, <laughs> but, it was, uh, you know, Paul just basically pointed out the weakness of their message, you know, and, yeah. and a, lot, a lot of messages that people use for their, their means of salvation is by words. That's and, right. and, 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 and in here also it said um, that there is no one who is wise enough to debate with God mm -hmm. and it is better to be called a fool for God by the world than to be called a fool for the world by God a wise person knows that anything apart from God is foolish so he does not engage in worldly pursuits all right all right so let's go on what time is it there? Oh, oh yeah, we gotta go ahead here. The next outline is, I'm sorry, the cross and the world's expectations. First Corinthians 1, through 24. Can I get a reader? Yeah, I'll read that. The contrast between the world's thinking and God's thinking is astonishing. Man is impressed by things with high entertainment value. As a society, we spend billions of dollars on amusement. 
for the Jews of Paul day, the most impressive things was miraculous signs from God. Jesus' opponents were constantly looking for a sign from him that would prove to them that he was sent from God. And out of mercy and compassion, Jesus gave them many signs. The gospel contained many miracles, all of which served as sign that Jesus is the son of God. Sadly, no matter what they saw, the Jewish authorities of Jesus' day were never satisfied. The Greeks were more impressed by worldly wisdom than they were by signs. Not concerned with visible demonstrations of power, Greek cultures were fascinated by philosophers and orators who could provide knowledge to the masses. The Greeks were very much in love with knowledge and human reasoning. As far as the Jews were concerned, the cross was a stumbling block. The Greek word for this was skank, skank dally, skank, skank delon, from which we get the word scandal. To the Jews, there was something scandalous about the cross of Christ. They were offended by it. What they perceived was an instrument of torture and death was used by God as an instrument of deliverance and salvation. Mm. The Greeks, on the other hand, considered the preaching of the cross to be foolish. They did not understand it, nor did they care to. They had absolutely no interest in listening to such nonsense, as they were much too wise to accept such a counterintuitive message. They failed to see the power in a message that to them looked like a, a failure. The foolishness of the cru crucifixion made them unable to even consider the further proclamation of Christ's resurrection. The difference between first century Jews, Greeks and Christian is quite clear. Jews were in love with signs, Greeks were in love with wisdom and Christians are in love with Jesus. As the, old, as the Bible says, uh, the Greeks professing themselves to be fool, uh, be, professing themselves to be wise became fools, you know. But, you know, I, uh, I think our elders spoke on it before, you know, they didn't understand why, you know, why uh, Christ died on the cross. They figured he should be able to get, you know, if he was, if he was, if he was, you know, if he was God, he'd be able to take himself down. Why would he go through such, you know, go through such torment? You know, they wanted to challenge that. They wanted to have their reason why he, you know, why he did this and didn't do that. So, and it's a lot of stuff up in here, but, you know, they just wanted to, you know, they wanted to challenge. And, 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 and like I said, you didn't want to believe that the cross, someone used the cross, you know, as for salvation, yet, you know, and you get tormented on it, as it says, and then, and say, I think the Greeks, they just wanted to challenge, they were, they, oh, they were smart, they knew it all. And then, like I say, I think you said this too, uh, uh, missionary fact, people always want to see signs. You know, oh, yeah. Why do you believe, why do you want to see signs? Like you say, go ahead, uh, you, you say, go break your arm to see if God will <laughs> heal it, you know? They want to, you right. know, they want to see tangible. A lot of people want to see the tangible things and stuff. So, yes, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, if no one else has anything else, I guess we only have two minutes. So, if somebody can read one at uh, one more outline, then we're gonna have to close it out. I can read and, it. Elder Milton, you you muted. Okay. He was speaking. The cross and its greatness. First Corinthians one twenty five. Okay. Who was that? Sister Alicia says she read. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. There is no comparison between the wisdom and strength of God and the wisdom and strength of the world. Paul states that the foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of men, and the weakness of God is stronger than the power of men. Of course, there is no actual foolishness 
or weakness in God. God is omnipotent, all powerful, and omniscient, all knowing. Paul is speaking comparatively here, showing that nothing humans can do is worthy of comparison next to God. Men may consider God to be weak and foolish, but they prove their own foolishness and weakness when they oppose mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's 10 o'clock on the nose, so we have to close out. And there's a lot more in this lesson. Um, so um, it's your own leisure. You can read more of it. There's a lot more to get out of the lesson. But I thank each and every one of you for your participation on this morning. And um, I'm going to let you know that we, uh, if you want to uh, give to this ministry, you can do so by going to Givelify. Um, you can go to our website and um, click on uh, Givelify, Givelify there. Or if you have it, you can, you know, if you uh, feel led to do so, please. Uh, do. Um, also, we will have our uh, morning service in the building. You can come out to 4516 Beach Road, Temple Hills, Maryland. Come on out and get what God has for you. The waters are being stirred, and we're lifting up the name of Jesus, knowing that he's able to do all things but fail us. Glory to God. So we are still doing uh, social distancing. We're still doing um, the mask. So bring your mask and come on and lift up the praise to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's fellowship together in Jesus' name. So at this time, we're going to ask that our deacon will close us out. Amen. God bless you all. 11 o'clock, that is, if I didn't say, I'm sorry, 11 o'clock. Okay. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness, for, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good work. God bless everyone. I hope to see you at 11. Amen. God bless. Amen. You. God bless. See you. Amen. Amen.